Hi, I'm a scientist with the Bone Health and Exercise Science Lab, or Bones Lab. A while ago, we did a video sharing three things you should know about OsteoStrong, which you can find on our YouTube channel. A new study about OsteoStrong, led by researchers in Greece, was released early online prior to publication in February 2025 in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. In this video, I will reveal things you should know about the new study. Watch till the end, I'll share something many people don't know about the study. The new OsteoStrong study does not meet even the most basic standards expected of all scientific studies. There are no clear objectives or hypotheses. There is no information about ethical approval. And alarmingly, there is no clear statistical analysis plan describing how the results were analyzed. The study fails to describe how the authors collected and analyzed data for many of their outcomes or what the control group did. There's a checklist that outlines accepted international standards for research reporting that all researchers should adhere to. The new OsteoStrong study is missing most of the things on that list. The scientific community agrees that all clinical trial protocols should be registered in a widely available online registry to ensure transparency. The registration number should be included in the published study. Without a registered protocol, no one could confirm if the researchers did what they planned or if they changed the way they analyzed or reported the results to align with what they wanted to see. Interestingly, there is no information confirming that the OsteoStrong trial was registered. We contacted the authors and the university's ethics board to determine if it was registered and received no response. From what we can tell, it is a very low quality study where no efforts were made to reduce the risk of bias. Instead of using the gold standard study design, a randomized control trial, Participants were allowed to choose whether they wanted to be in the control group or the OsteoStrong group. People keen to participate in OsteoStrong may have had a different health status or habits than people who didn't want to participate, resulting in a risk of bias. A good trial will ensure the people doing assessments do not know whether the participant they are assessing is in the intervention or control group so that they cannot influence the results. The study did not report any attempt to hide participants' group status from assessors. We think it's strange that they enrolled participants taking osteoporosis medications. Medications increase bone mineral density, which can confound the results, especially if the type of medication or duration of use is variable, or if the number of participants is too small to tease out the effects of medication separately from the effects of osteostrong. The study reports very little information about the types of osteoporosis medications study participants were taking, how long they were, had taken medications for, or whether they took it regularly. This new study was not designed to accurately test the effects of medication and OsteoStrong separately. For many people who want information about OsteoStrong, an important question is, did the study report that OsteoStrong increased bone mineral density compared to controls? The surprising answer is that we don't know, because the authors didn't report any analyses of between group differences in bone mineral density at the hip or spine. They instead reported other statistics that are not typically used nor accepted in clinical trials, like changes in bone mineral density T-scores or the percent of people who experienced an increase in bone mineral density. Most people would agree that the results should focus on whether the bone mineral density change in one group is different from the other group. The new study reported changes within each group, but did not report on the statistical analysis comparing between the groups. Without a between-group analysis, it's not appropriate to make conclusions about the effectiveness of OsteoStrong compared to control. If you look closely, you'll see that the average bone mineral density was already different between groups at the start of the study, which should not happen if the groups are balanced. There's also no information in the paper about how they dealt with baseline differences, missing data, or handling larger-than-expected individual changes, called outliers. They reported very large changes in some participants, changes that seem implausible. Including outliers can falsely increase the average change. There were several errors and outliers in the paper. We believe that someone might need to take a closer look at the data and statistical analyses. Are you skeptical of research that's funded or influenced by drug companies? Well, something you might not know is that this new study was funded by a private company that owns OsteoStrong franchises. Although the authors disclose the funding for the study, there's still significant potential for conflict of interest. 
Ultimately, we think that whoever reviewed this study may have missed a few things when choosing to accept this paper. The journal has a list of authorship guidelines, and the paper doesn't even meet all of those. Sometimes, bad science gets published. The Bones Lab and other scientists globally have made the editors at the journal aware of our concerns about this paper and have called for its retraction. We at the Bones Lab and our international colleagues do not think you should make decisions to participate in OsteoStrong based on this new study. There are two other studies about OsteoStrong that have not been published yet, which may provide more insight into OsteoStrong. Subscribe to our channel to get updates on the results of those studies when they are published. Check out our video, Three Things You Should Know About OsteoStrong, to learn more about the other research available on OsteoStrong. Thanks for watching.